we are live, I think. <laughs> There's always like this, <laughs> this like purgatory in the middle where it doesn't say it's live, but you are live. And we so are we're live. live. Welcome in, guys. Joined by Coach Rachel. We're going to be talking today about consistency. Man, isn't that the answer we're all trying to fix, right? We've said it once. We've said it 100 million times. The answer to being able to get to your final goal and sustain it forever is less about optimizing for the perfect scenario, and it's about starting and never stopping again. So that's kind of the, the realm that we're looking through. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, you have six strategies plus a bonus or five plus a bonus? I have six plus a bonus. Oh, my God. <laughs> I well, know, so exciting, so exciting, well, you know, and I, I talk about the strategy because, or I talk about consistency, I feel like all the time with my clients, because I'm still working, as I tell my clients, on the magic pixie dust that just fixes everything. Yeah. I'm still working on the patent, so I'll let you know, but until then, consistency, right? We I just need to start, like you said, and never stop, but I was thinking about this the other day, Ryan, that I'd say that all the time, but how actually do we are do we get to be consistent like it feels like that's like the middle like just be consistent okay well right. how do we be consistent like so just was thinking through what are some of the strategies that we can utilize to be consistent so number one hit me i'll write I, it in the chat too set goals okay set goals like we we have to know where we're going Simple. and we have to continue to have be there so we just have to set goals okay so we got to have a target and i know that we have some some things in here first question I would have is like, uh, okay, how? Like that's the first how? thing that comes to mind for yeah. me. So how are we setting And so these most goals? people, right. And so, and, you, and this is a pretty, I mean, most people probably know about SMART goals, but if you don't, I think we've got a graphic about SMART goals, but yeah. we want to set a target that is SMART. So that is specific, I am I blanking on that M for measurable. a second. It's specific, it's measurable, it's yeah. attainable, it is realistic, yeah. right? And timely yeah. or time bound. Yep. So we need to do that. And you can do that, you know, just by writing it on a piece of paper. You can do that with a friend. You can do that with a coach. But you need to have it. And I would suggest that you actually write it down. Of course. Because it's one thing just to have it in your head. But there is some science around actually writing down your goals. Yeah, it brings it into reality because when you write it down or tell it to other people, it makes it more real and it holds you more accountable. Even if you never tell anyone, but you write it down, that's some accountability amongst yourself. And I'm curious what you think about this, Rachel. Do you, like, what's your thought about setting results-based goals versus action-based goals? Should we only set action-based goals? Should we only set results-based goals? What percentage to action to results-based goals should we set? Should we check our progress on results-based goals every single day? Should we, you know, like, how do I go about uh, maybe the percentage of tracking or setting and then tracking? Yeah, and I don't know if I've ever, that's a really interesting way to ask that question, Ryan. I don't know if I thought about percentage-wise, so you're making me think here. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure if I thought about percentage-wise, but I do think that having a results-based goal can be important. But as I challenge my clients or as I challenge myself, the only thing we can actually impact is our actions. 100%. So we're not, we don't. While I know SMART talks about time bound or being timely, um, that needs to be, especially if we're talking about weight loss goals, that maybe is a little looser than if we're talking about building a house or like fixing, I don't know, something like that. Um, because we only get to pick or we're only in control of how, but the actions that we take. Yes. We have to kind of let go even, which is hard, of the time that it takes because our bodies are going to react how our bodies react. Yep. Like if you do the work, you will get to reap the rewards. That is the truth. But we're not in control of when we get to reap all these rewards. Yeah, a hundred percent. I don't know what I you think about. I, think I don't know if you maybe you've got some suggestions about percentages that I can learn today. Yeah, I mean percentages. It's hard to say. I mean, for me, it's less about percentages and it's more about just like set one result based goal, maybe two. But it's all about how often you're checking them, in my opinion, because like you said, you can't control it. So it's kind of like watching paint dry. It's like if you're standing in a room and watch paint dry and you're trying to make it dry faster, it's not going to happen. <laughs> you're just going to get frustrated. <laughs> uh, same, it's, it's a correlate, it correlates to stepping on the scale. It's like if you step on the scale every day, most likely it's going to create a negative feedback loop, not a positive one. 
and it's going to leave you feeling worse. And if you think about what we're trying to do, again, zoom out, what did we talk about in the beginning? We're trying to start, never stop again. We need to eliminate negative feedback loops. So if you're stepping on the scale and then feeling bad, that is essentially just creating more headwinds that don't need to be there. So I'm a big believer that you set that result-based goal and you just don't look. Not, un, not often enough to where it would show something negative. Meaning right. maybe for weight, it's once a month. But what are you tracking every day? Your action-based goals. Right. right. And putting those on, I mean, I think, and I really encourage my clients to put it on a calendar, like, and not just like in your phone calendar, but, and this gets to one of the other things too, so we can revisit it then as well, but having something that you can see visual yes. that, look, I got this much water in today, or I did this, I did this, I've got this many steps in today, or I ate my protein goals today, or whatever that is, so that you can see cumulatively over a month, all of these you know, gold stickers or whatever on this like calendar that you're like, I am doing an amazing job creating those actions and creating yes. those habits. And I would, I would argue for that too, that that just helps us, uh, just like how we want to eliminate negative feedback loops, that's going to help create a positive one. You know, there's a lot of ways we can get pleasure and essentially a positive feedback loop is just like you do an action and you get pleasure from it. That's all. <laughs> Easy peasy. And so, again, we're just like little kids. A sticker works yeah. almost just as well. Yeah. So at least for me, <laughs> there's a lot of ways you can get it. Right? You can get it from other people. You can get it from a coach. You can get it from yourself. You can get it from, you know, little actions like stickers or, you know, a lot of the times, again, the reason we stop our journey is we feel discouraged. So how can you set up as many actions as possible to encourage you amongst, you know, your journey, if you will. So all yeah. good things to think about. Yeah. Anything else? So set goals. That's number yeah. one. I think that's good. So number two, and I think this then just feeds right into number two, is yeah. learning how to prioritize. Yes. So if you think about all the things, because you talked about there are multiple things that we need to do, not just in our health and fitness journey, but we just have a lot to do in life, yeah. right? We just have a lot to do. And I think, and you have, we've, we talked about this before, but that how do we prioritize and think about things as urgent and important? Yes. So, and I think we got a little graph too. So, uh, yep, and this up. might look familiar to, oh, it's showing it, but I just can't see it. Um, yeah, you won't but, see it. No. <laughs> it's a secret. <laughs> um, it's a secret. <laughs> this is a secret though. But thinking about things in your life, not just about your health and fitness, but to be able to put things on this matrix or in this matrix of what is urgent and what is important. Yes. And what I think often happens is that are especially our fitness, so exercising, but maybe food choices as well, often falls into this not urgent and not important mm -hmm. category, meaning that all of these other things happen around it. Yeah, I think I agree with you 100%. I think, you know, a lot of us, I, I, I think, know it's important, right? I think if you were to poll the majority of people in the, in the US and say like, hey, is your health important? Everyone's gonna say yes. So, but, but to your point, yeah, it's just not urgent. It's not, there, there seem to be this misalignment where urgency outweighs importance. And yes. we have this, um, this barometer that can sometimes be broken with what is actually important. Because, right, as, as you see on the, or maybe you don't see it, but I'm going to send Everybody else can see it. That's fine. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm just in the dark over here. It's okay. I'll send it to you <laughs> as well so that you can see it. It's, okay. I, it's okay. funny. We pull up all these things beforehand and then um, I just, you know. And, and, I, and I misspoke before. Yeah, I agree with you, Ryan, as you're doing that, that we know that um, our health and fitness is important. Yeah. But it's... It, not urgent. Or yeah. at least we categorize it as not urgent. Yeah. And we j and and because of that, like, again, the barometer is broken. We put things in place that seem important and that are urgent. And then we never get to number two, which is like urgent, uh, not urgent. Because we're not, you know, let's be real. The majority of us, like, you know, we're not going to, f you know, get a heart attack tomorrow, most likely. Right. There isn't something so pressing that we know of that forces us to take action. But this is why also when there is something like that, now it becomes urgent and important and it shifts into the box. I think one of the things that is bene beneficial to all of us is how can we look at our health differently so that it pushes into urgent? Because if you think about it, it's all about framing. 
framing is just how you look at something. You can, yeah. a lot of us think that we experience our life. And the reality is we don't. We experience how we view our life, right? Mm -hmm. That's why you can mm -hmm. have two people in very similar situations. One person's depressed, frustrated, and is, you know, having a very bad time. And the other person is understanding and feeling great. How? They have the same similar life conditions. That's how they view it. And that, you know, of course, there's a lot that goes into that, our model of the world and things like that. But how can we shift from something being not, not urgent to urgent? One of, the reason, one of the ways is you can just focus on how much pain you're in, right? Human beings will always work to go towards pleasure and away from pain. If you right. want to create a fire, like I, a lot of people will DM me and say like, oh man, I just need to get motivated. Okay, you really want to feel motivated? The majority of motivation you feel is not going to come from seeking pleasure. It's from getting out of pain. This is why some people need to reach rock bottom in order to make change because they need to be in a position that essentially their lizard brain pops in and goes, I'm going to die, right? If I keep feeling this way and I being at rock bottom isn't bad. It can be a motivation to keep you going. But my invitation to you is don't wait until you're at rock bottom in reality, get there in your head. How do you get there? You focus on the pain you're in and this context of people that want to lose weight and sustain it forever focus on, you know, how is your confidence taking a hit? since you know you getting the situation in how is your energy taking a hit how is that stopping you from being the person you want to be for yourself for your kids for your husband if you focus on that i promise you that you go from not urgent to urgent or from urgent to freaking mega urgent uh, let's go super urgent yeah and, this, and i think yeah. and i think it's a really good i mean all of those things but in the really like practical paper to pencil sense i actually think it's a really good idea to spend yeah maybe 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes um, looking at this grid and actually writing things down in your life and seeing where you first put them. And then based on what you just said in, in terms of moving away from pain, moving towards pleasure, moving away from pain, how do we maybe reorganize them? So I would suggest that you do yes. this in pencil first right? <laughs> so that then you can make some changes. Yeah. yeah right? Because I do, but I do think it's important, again, just like I think it's important to write goals down I think for this, you can have all these thoughts in your head in terms of what you think is important or urgent or not urgent or whatever. But if you actually physically see it on a piece of paper, it then might shift something in your brain to be like, oh, maybe I can wait 15 extra minutes after I come home from work to start cooking dinner because I do need to spend, and maybe it's only 15 minutes, but I need to spend 15 minutes stretching or foam rolling or working out or doing something because... I'm fairly certain that my 17 year old will not, they might, but probably won't perish if they don't, <laughs> if they wait 15 more minutes yeah. from starvation yeah. or waiting yeah. 15 minutes. So, but thinking about that, but I think it's sometimes easier to see it on a sheet of paper rather yeah. than just like thinking. I'm curious if there's anyone listening right now, either on live or on recording that has had one, a shift in urgency, a shift in importance to them. And I'm curious what caused that. And also, uh, you know, is there potentially something that's in one of these boxes that should be in another? Or should your focus be shifting from one box, you know, to another? I know that this one, we didn't create this chart, obviously. And you can see in the subtext, it things, says things like software, architecture, and clean coding. Obviously, don't read the subtext. Just, you know, take the, <laughs> take the, take the main text, right? Super priority, productive things, delegate these yeah. and avoid. I think that, you know, it's, you know, we won't dive too much into this because we want to get to these other uh, four things. But it's like a lot of us, and I know I'm the, the greatest offender or have been in the past to being in the fourth box, not important, not urgent, doing things that really just are distracting us that we should avoid. Things like doom scrolling on Facebook or on YouTube or on TikTok. But again, it's mechanical to say, well, just don't do that because it's not productive. But again, this game of losing weight and sustaining it forever is not mechanical, it's emotional, right? It's not physiology as much as it is psychology. So the question is, why are we doing it? And then what can we solve for so that emotionally we don't feel the need to distract ourselves as much, right? Because, yeah. you know, you, I know you've, I think we've even talked about this in the past, this idea yeah. of like, um, uh, what was it called? Revenge, uh, what is it? can't remember the word, but it's, uh, it's got some really clever title, but it's the, this idea of staying up later than we're supposed to, because it makes us feel like we're in control. 
So I can't remember oh. what it's called. Oh, revenge procrastination. So if we feel like we're not in control of our lives, we we don't understand why, but like normally when it's time for go to bed at eight o'clock or nine o'clock, we stay up later so that we can feel like we're in control, even though we know- We get to pick. Yeah, even though we know that it's hurting us tomorrow because we're not going to be able to you know, sleep as well, we're going to be tired, whatever, and it creates a downward slope and spiral, which we right. don't want to be in. But right. like I remember I used to do that all the freaking time when I was in high school and you know early college and things like that. I would I would do that cuz I yeah, when I went to school, I never felt like I was in control. Because yeah. like especially in high school, like I'd wake up, it'd be like, you know, 6 a.m., 7 a.m. and then I was like in a jail. I felt like cuz I wasn't learning much in high school. Or I didn't feel like I was. Um and then I was out at 3 and then at 3 I would go and do the thing I wanted to do, which was like teach martial arts and like learn about business and learn about, you know, people and so on and so forth. Yeah. So like, I know that I didn't feel like I was in control for many, many years and then I have to do homework and everything. So yeah, I would just stay up later to feel like I was in control. It's a very interesting thing. And I don't know if anyone's out there, anyone out there has ever dealt with that. Rachel, have you ever experienced that before? Or? Well, I think, yeah. And then that gets to one of my other things, my other points too, in terms of like, how do we, um, and maybe we'll just like skip to that one. That's fine. But uh, I think one of the things, maybe after you learn how to prioritize, so I am prioritizing my list in a different way, just yeah. on the fly, um, that tracking time. Mm. So I think, so you know what your priorities are. I think the other piece of information to kind of know about yourself is we all have 24 hours in the day, right? Yeah. Yes. Some of us are at work. We have like three twelves that we're working or four tens that we're working, that we're working in these so, I mean, some of that, as you're talking about, so relating back to what you're saying, is not in our control of our time. However, tracking time, we all have time. Yes. And I used to kind of roll my eyes when people would say that, but we all have time. And now I'm not like this huge follower and fan of David Goggins because I think he's a little extreme. <laughs> so I think, I think, but I think there are nuggets of things that he says that are really good. If you want to go research David Gockett, it's fine. Please do not run like five ultra marathons without training and doing the stupid things that he does. Don't, don't, I'm don't not run advocating tremendous pain. Yeah. I am not advocating running on broken feet, all the things, but he is fairly inspirational. And he, yeah. and he does say some things. One of the things that he challenges you to do is to look at all 24 hours in your day. Yeah. And for maybe just a couple of days, track where you're spending every minute, mm -hmm. not like not every hour, but like really tracking those times and he challenges us and I've done that and I've done it. I've tracked for like three days. I don't know why I hold up two fingers, but I've meant three fingers um, that we have pockets of time. So we have 10 minutes here or 15 minutes here or something here. Now I'm not saying that you need to be super productive at all times. Cause I do think that there is a benefit to some downtime, Of course, um, but we all have time. And so if if in that urgent prayer or that important grid matrix that we did, we say it is important for me to get healthy, there is time and we all have it. We just yeah. have to find it. We just have to find it. And we don't know and we can't be in control if we don't know where those pockets of time are. So is that number three? Is like that was run, number three. Run a time audit. Yeah, I've done yeah. that a few times with myself too, for mainly for productivity and business. So like it's easy to, you know, uh, I think the expression is like, it's easy to be busy and not productive. You know, it's like, how easy is it to just be like, whoa, it's like four o'clock. And you're like, I, you know, I was, I was busy the whole day. And it's like, cool. What'd you do? <laughs> you know, what moved the ball forward? Yeah. You know, and every, all, every single one of us are the CEO of our life, of our health and, and of our bodies of our like, yes. So it's up to you to move the ball forward. No one's coming to save you, even if you work with a coach. Like the coach isn't there to save you; they're here to guide you and to compress decades and in, decades into days. But at the end of the day, if you don't move, uh, there's you know nothing that can happen. They're there as a support, kind of like a supplement. You know, they're that's not the main thing. Um, but yeah, running a time audit is super powerful. The the functionality I did with it was I set an alarm on my phone every fifteen minutes, which sounds heavy. It's not that heavy, but it's only a couple of days. It's not like you're. It's yeah. not like. Yeah, it's, it's not, not like this is a life skill that you're yeah. learning. You're not. Exactly. You don't get to learn to do this. It's a. It's a tool. And then I had on a spreadsheet because I was at a computer, but you could just use the notes on your phone. 
And yeah, like it's not as annoying as you think because all you're doing is just taking three seconds and writing down what you were doing. And yeah. if you're on task and productive, then, and doing like the most important thing, usually every 15 minutes, you're just right. I'm doing this thing. I'm doing this thing. I'm doing this thing. I'm doing this thing. So like it would go off for five times while I'm exercising. And then it would go off like, you know, four times while I did this podcast, which may not feel productive, but I know there's some people out there, even if they're not commenting that hear this and go, okay, yeah. cool. Like I can do this too. And that's why we make this podcast, right? Regardless of whether you ever take advantage of one-on-one coaching or not, we're here to help you break through. And part of that is by sharing beliefs that when you adopt, you can take and run with and other are just more mechanical actions of like, I never thought about it that way that you can yeah. take and run with as well. And again, the goal, the school, if we remind at the beginning that we're trying to just give you tips and tools on how to be consistent. Yep. So if you want to be, because we preach consistency, uh, yep. the consistent thing, right? So you're setting goals, you're learning to prioritize, you are tracking time. I think the other thing is limiting distractions. So this is number four, yep. limiting distractions. So let's say you did set the time, I'm going to work out or I'm going to meal prep. Think about how can you limit, not eliminate, but yes. limit distractions that are that could occur. So yes. is it that you need your partner or your um, friend across the street to watch your kids or your dog when you're meal prepping? <laughs> like, right. what, what is it that you need to do so that you really can be focused and use that half an hour that you carved out for that exercise or meal prepping or whatever it is to be there? So. Or like kind of look ahead to say what might be distractions? What might happen? Do you unplug your phone? Do you, or you yeah. did you put your phone on, on mute or put it in the other silent? room? Like, yeah, I sleep uh, with my phone talking about like going to sleep and whatnot. It's like uh, putting my phone downstairs in my office. Like it's nowhere near me. Yes. Yeah. Otherwise, like it's all it's just goes all the way back. Every, everything we talk about connects to each other, pain and pleasure and resistance. It's like if I'm feeling a little understimulated, which I should because I'm going to sleep, but like I'm bored going laying down, going to bed because I've been overstimulated all day. And it's this easy to reach out and grab my phone and start going on it. And there goes an hour uh, versus oh, I got to get out of bed, walk all the way downstairs, unplug it, walk all the way back up. I'll just lay here for another five minutes. And then what do you know? I fall asleep, <laughs> you know? So it's like creating this resistance making it more painful to do things that we don't want to be doing in the first place, you know, the better. Yeah. So, so yeah, so maybe those are tied together. So limit the known distractions, but also put that barrier in between you and what might distract you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would say too, like, again, if you feel like you need distraction all the time, again, that's a signal. It's not good or bad. It's a signal. doesn't mean you're broken. It's a signal. So if you feel that like, oh my God, I can't take a shower. I can't go to the bathroom without my phone. I cannot take a shower without watching a video on YouTube. I cannot cook without watching a video. Now I'm not saying that you shouldn't do these things because it's fine to do, but just see, do why am I dependent on it? Because there's something true about needing to distract ourselves from the present because the present is too painful in our own head because we're reminded of all the life conditions that we do not want to experience. Yeah. So you know, again, like this is like, you know, can be heavy stuff for some people or, you know, if you're not exposed to it, but like, this is real transformation. You know, we're not interested in flashing the before and after and getting you on a program that's going to be like, you know, make you look good for your son's graduation this year. We want you to be able to have, look good for your son's son's graduation in 30 years. Right. Right. Like that's what right. we're about. You know, this yeah. isn't about the next six months. I mean, the next six weeks, it's not even about the next six months. It's about the next six years. It's about the next 60 years, right? And yeah, it might take you a little bit longer to be able to solidify it. But guess what? Once you're solid. But then it sticks. Yeah, then it sticks. Back. Yeah. So it's good stuff. Yeah. Uh, so we're on number four. So limit right? distractions. Okay, we have two more. And then actually three. But so we'll do the last two. I'll be quick. Um, and no rush. I'm not going anywhere. Number <laughs> five, record, record your progress. So we talked about this already. So I think this goes back to... We set these goals and we are recording and progress can just be about action progress, right? So we are saying, I get a gold sticker or a gold star, or I get a pat on the back, a high five in the mirror, whatever that is, or <laughs> I did it three days this week. Like I yeah. did strength training three days this week, or I 
did strength training one day this week because I've never done it before. And yeah. I consistently for four weeks on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, whatever it was, did this. Yeah. It is about making sure that we are we are recording that progress because that's yeah. important. And like celebrating victories as a part of that. Like I would say too, like, look, you have this, you have this, like, in my opinion, valuable resource that's free that you can leverage whenever you want. And it's this Facebook group. There's 15, yeah. over 15,000 people in this group. Now, not everyone's going to see every post, but over 90% of them, uh, people in this group are RNs. So they know what you're going through. They know the struggle. They know the stress. And like one of the questions we ask when every single person comes to, comes into this group is like, can you be supportive to other people? And if you can't, you're going to be removed. So it's like, this is a safe place. So just shoot up a post, you know, hey, and it can be something small. I stuck to my walk, walking goal every day for five days. And I promise you that like, you're going to get a whirlwind of likes and comments saying you rock. And if I see it too, I don't see every post as well. It's kind of the same thing. Facebook only shows certain ones. Like I'll, I'll, uh, you know, see it too. I'll comment and, you know, we'll all comment and we'll celebrate with you. And it's like, it can feel a little, I feel like in America, it's like we have this epidemic of loneliness and it feels weird to like reach out for help or to acknowledge ourselves in a positive way because we're afraid other people will be like, oh, easy for you or whatever. But that's not what this group is. You know, if I ever see anyone even remotely doing anything negative, they're gone. And we've only luckily over like the past year or so in this group or two years, we've had, uh, I think, over 15,000 people in the group and maybe I've banned 10 people. And they didn't even say anything negative. It was because they were trying to sell something. You know, they're like, buy my ketone pill. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like the majority of people. Yeah, but so and I think to your point, Ryan, too, it is about we often celebrate at the end. Yeah. But let's just like sell it. Let's let's be celebrate proud of during, baby. Consistency. Great. We are yes. celebrating your consistent actions towards whatever goal that you set. So, all right. 100%. So record your progress. So record it in your home so that you can see it. Great comment about recording it on the Facebook group so we all can see it. Tell just tell people about that you are Tell the mailman. <laughs> hey. So that you're amazing. Right. Let me tell you something. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and the last one, the last of the six then is you also just need to be patient with yourself and give yourself some grace because you know what? This is a process. This is a journey. This is, um, I was talking to a client this morning who was feeling a little frustrated and she's like, I know, I know these things seem easy. I'm like, cognitively, we understand 10,000 steps, this much water, this much yeah. many calories, this much protein, blah, blah, blah. I mean, on paper and in our brains, cognitively, it feels like, yeah, I'm not stupid. I'm, right. I'm a really high powered nurse. Yeah. Why can't I do this? You know what? It's because we have created these neural pathways in our brains to create, to support these other habits. Mm -hmm. Okay. Those other habits though, might not be as conducive to what your goals are. Yes. And the, these are newish goals, maybe. So we, it takes time. It takes time to create new habits. So we also just need to give ourselves some grace, which is hard. But yeah, I made a, it, yeah, it's hard. I made a, a video recently. Um, uh, actually, I don't know if you've seen it. Maybe I could pull it up. But it's a, it's a skit, essentially, where it's talking about like the, it, it's showing the coach to client relationship with the client being the nurse, obviously. And, you know, the nurse comes home exhausted and, you know, she's like, oh my, which is me in the skit. <laughs> she's like, uh, you know, I don't want to work out today. Like, just order me a pizza. And the coach is like, okay, you know, what, what, oh, yeah. like, what do you want for toppings? They're like, is this a trick? <laughs> and it's like, no, uh, you know, the, the client says, I think, aren't you supposed to tell me to do the right thing? And the coach says, yeah, I am going to tell you to do the right thing. But the right thing right now is for you to, you know, cope with these emotions and look big picture you only get this level of stress like three to six percent of the time even if you have that pizza today or do whatever like you're still on track 94 to 97 percent of the time so let's like let's give this to yourself let's make it it's not about the next six weeks if you work out today fine but like that's not really going to do much what's going to do much is if you're still doing this path or still on this path six months or six years or 60 years from now and it's like oh and you know flood of comments of people saying you know positive things you know, I totally identify with this, all that. And, um, 
yeah, I mean, it's true. We just need to give ourselves a little more empathy. I, I've heard, I know you said patience as well. I heard someone say before, patience is not being able to sit and wait for an outcome. It's deciding what to do in the meantime. So if you're patient, again, this goes back to watching paint dry. Being patient is not staring at paint, watching it dry and being okay with it. That's insanity. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like... patience is <laughs> distracting yourself in a sense, like with a good distraction of deciding what to do in the meantime. So like if I, uh, yeah, like, uh, I'm trying to think of a good example that cur currently applies to me. Wanting my son to be old enough to have deep conversations with him. Okay. He's going to be a couple of years, but right. Yeah. He's two years old. Am I going to just like every day wake up and be like, oh, you know, why is he older? <laughs> like, er, you know, get him older. It's like, no, I'm going to try to focus on enjoying the time that I have with him now and playing, you know, and enjoying that. You know, again, this is a far reach, but one of the ways we could look at that is like, if you're just starting your journey and you want the results to come faster, enjoy the immediate results that you're getting because you know, this is kind of the fastest that they happen. You get beginner gains, especially if you're starting exercising. Like when you're, you know, six years down the line, you're not really progressing anymore. You've kind of hit your cap. And yeah, now you're really right. just like, you know, maintaining maybe slight improvements. So enjoy the early process. You know, uh, there's all of us, me included at times are rushing to the finish line. But when we get there, all we do is move the finish line further out and we're consistently unhappy. Or instead, if we can truly, you know, happily achieve, or again, I'm hitting you guys with a bunch of platitudes, but I remember hearing growing up, you know, you don't achieve happiness, you know, you happily achieve. So- Yeah, I like that, I like know, that. It's, yeah. it's, uh, if you're unhappy getting to your goal, you're gonna be unhappy when you're at your goal. So you should probably change your process. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I like that. So yes, again, and again, it's a, all about, I love the whole, the whole skit thing too, because it is about go. And this is another, whatever, but it goes back to the 80, 20 rule, right? We don't need to, you don't need to be perfect all the time. You don't even need to be perfect. You just need to be moving forward. And sometimes, and somebody puts something, I mean, we, we share things in the groups. Um, but I think of it as a little, like this little dance, a little cha-cha-cha. You don't get to go forward every time when you cha-cha-cha. You have to go backwards too, right? So life is not always about that forward yeah, movement climb. on the small scale. On the large scale it is, sure. right? So we want to continue on the large scale to move forward. But on the small scale, we're just, sometimes we're just dancing and that's okay. And enjoy the dance then. Enjoy the dance. Enjoy, enjoy that pizza and yeah. What I would say about that whole thing specifically is just make sure it is a really, really good pizza. And that's yeah. fine then, right? Yeah, that's a really acid. good piece of don't chocolate. Don't get the gluten-free one. Get the best one. No, no, get the like, get, and don't, I'm plant-based, but get, if you're not, get the whole cheese, get the whole whatever, yeah. get, get what you love and enjoy what you love for that time. And then you get to wake up the next day and be like, I'm just going to make a different choice tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. It's you fine. know, again, you know, a couple of diff couple one offs as well as we wrap up. It's like, yeah, if we were to be one day on one day off, if if every single day that you restarted the next day you fell off, you would still be on track 50% of the time. Correct. That's, that's a lot. lot. That's a lot. That's, that's, that's way more than, way yeah. more than zero. That's ridiculous. And if every third day you fell off, you'd still be on track 66% of the time. 75%, 80%. Right. And it, it's like, it's a game of consistency. Um, not which is what too, this podcast is about. Yes, consistency. Yeah, not, yeah, hey, not to get too philosophical on us, but you know, we're talking about a dance, right? I remember hearing uh, from there's a philosopher, uh, he, he passed, but his name was uh, Alan Watts. Have you ever heard of him? Hmm. So he uh, talks about philosophy, you know, some of it's uh, a little too deep for me. But he did say something that was quite interesting. Um, and you know, potentially, uh, we watched that video. I mean, it's a four minute video. Do you have a 11 o'clock call? I do not. Ooh, so maybe I do not. So I can stick video. with you a little longer. <laughs> I'll give you the preface really fast. Um, or actually, no, he would explain it way better. All right, let's take okay. a moment. It's only a three minute video. Um, we're taking a moment. 
music and life. Yeah, and it's like illustrated. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so well, I get to see it too, though. Uh, I won't. Good question. I will sit here and meditate. Then. No, no, I want you to see it because I want you to be able to react. Um, let me see. Give me one second. I'll make it so you can. Okay. I will fix it. Okay. So yeah, you're just going to disappear for a second unless I, can you see, you can see my screen, right? I can see everything now. All right. Let me uh, change one thing. Okay. Because in order to, uh, in order to have you still show up, I have to. Is everything, is everybody seeing everything right now? Is everybody seeing everything? What do you mean? No, I mean, I'm just wondering if everybody gets to see the back, the back end. Oh, no. What? No. So just they're just looking at our faces. They're just looking, they're just looking at you, like, pay, paying attention. And, okay. Yeah. Let me. Uh, Look at I'm excited about seeing a new video. Always, always about learning. I'm trying to think about how to do this. not a journey. Uh, capture yeah. card, full. I might just, like, keep your face off it for a second. Because I don't know how to figure That's, it out. I don't care if my face is on there. I just want to, I do want to watch it. All right, let's watch it. Okay. I'm going to angle it down a little bit, too. Yeah, that's fine. The existence, the physical universe, quiet. is basically playful. There is no necessity for it whatsoever. It isn't going anywhere. That is to say, it doesn't have some destination that it ought to arrive at. But, but it is best understood by analogy with music. Because music, as an art form, is essentially playful. We say you play the piano. You don't work the piano. Why? Music differs from, say, travel. When you travel, you are trying to get somewhere. One doesn't make the end of the composition but the point of the, comp of the composition. Ah. If that were so, the best conductors would be those who play fastest. <laughs> and there would be composers who wrote only finales. <laughs> People would go to concerts just to hear one crackling chord, because that's the end. <laughs> Same way in dancing. You don't aim at a particular spot in the room. That's where you should arrive. The whole point of the dancing is the dance. Now, but we don't see that as uh, something brought by our education into our everyday conduct. We've got a system of schooling which gives us a completely different impression. It's all graded. And what we do is we put the child into the corridor of this grade system where they kind of come on, kitty, 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 and the yeah, you go to kindergarten, you know, and that's a great thing because when you finish that, you get it to first grade. And then come on, first grade leads to second grade, and so on, and then you get out of grade school, you go to high school, and it's revving up, the thing is coming, then you're gonna to go to college, and by Joe, then you get into graduate school, and when you're through with graduate school, you go out to join the world. And then you get into some racket where you're selling insurance, and then you've got that quota to make, and you're gonna make that, and all the time, the thing is coming. It's coming, it's coming, that great thing, the, the success you're working for. Then when you wake up one day about 40 years old, you say, my God, I've arrived. <laughs> I'm there. And you don't feel very different from what you always felt. By expectation, look at the people who live to retire and put those savings away. And then when they're 65, they don't have any energy left, they're more or less impotent, and uh, they go and rock an old people's senior citizens community. <laughs> because we simply cheated ourselves all the way down the line. <clears throat> we thought of life by analogy with a journey, with a pilgrimage, which had a serious purpose at the end, but the thing was to get to that end, success or whatever it is, or maybe heaven after your death. But we missed the point the whole way along.
It was a musical thing, and you were supposed to sing or dance while the music was being played. I like that. Yeah, that's interesting. I like that, and I like it, you know, in the context of even For more what interesting we are videos talking like about this one, today though. is about. It's it's not as though during this process with a coach that you don't get to enjoy anything. It's right. about figuring out what are those things that you enjoy, and let's continue to enjoy those things while we're making, while we're building different habits. Yes. Yeah, life's too short, man. Like, there's no reason that we should be, like, you know, sacrificing everything. Like, it, it's not only in our best interest for the result to enjoy the process, but it's also in our best interest for, you know, what I believe, not trying to put that belief on anybody else, but what I believe life's about and as much as it's hard for me to get in the state of, because I grew up in my 20s wanting to prove myself and get to the destination and do all these things. But really, it's the point is not to you know get to the end of the composition. The point is not to finish the dance. The point is to enjoy the dance as the music is being played. Yeah. So it's kind of... And I will have to say, I think, I think some of my most successful clients in this program and, and again it's not about selling the program but i think some of the most successful people that i have worked with um will say i wasn't even thinking I, like this is easy i'm enjoying myself the whole way along as i am learning about being a new person not a new person but as i am learning new habits and i am, am not i'm moving away from pain i'm moving towards pleasure i'm yeah. doing all these things and and still going back to the beginning, being consistent and reaching those goals. Yeah, definitely. We don't we don't ignore the goals just because we are dancing along with the no, music. We're just right. The goal is still there, but let's just dance along with the music while yeah. while we're getting there. And that's patience, right? Because we're just deciding something. That is patience on as we're going. That is consistency. That is just doing the thing. Yes, uh, Pandora. I don't know which one's your first name. Uh, Pandora, Roxanne, Simpson, Gonzalez. Uh, I'm going to go with Roxanne, maybe? Pandora? I don't know. But she says, good morning. And then Leanne uh, says, great information, but I'm not sure I will ever enjoy burpees, <laughs> which is fine. You don't have to enjoy burpees. You do not yeah. have to. Uh, I love the progress I'm making, so I do them because they're helping me on my wellness journey. Is, is Leanne your client? Or uh, it might be a charity? Leanne, who's your coach? I'm curious. Um, it's not me. <laughs> I'm, I'm drawing a huge blank. But uh, cool. Anything else you want to uh, you want to add? There? No, just the seventh. Just our, oh, our like just bonus. bonus. Well, we kind of talked oh. about it already. Remember, we talked about while we were recording progress, we were celebrating. So my whole big thing in life is to celebrate. Yeah. So yes, it is enjoying the dance. It is so it ties into all of this stuff. That yes, we need to celebrate. Uh, and I stole this from Mel Robbins, or I'm not stealing it. I'm just like spreading her word. You get yes. up before you brush your teeth. You give yourself a high five in the mirror. You yes. just like do it every day and you celebrate like the amazing person you are because you are on this journey. You are on a journey and you get to celebrate. You get to celebrate all the other things too. And we will celebrate with you, but you just get to also celebrate just being you. Yes. So, Yep. And then mechanically... Like we said in the past, like that's what gets you to step two, achieving positive feedback loops. Make this journey as pleasurable as possible. Stack the pleasure, whether that's because yep. you're acknowledging it for yourself, other you're getting in an environment where other people are acknowledging your wins with you. Like that's one of the powerful things about, uh, you know, not to shamelessly plug, but it's like having a coach where it's like every day or every week when life comes at you, because it's going to, there's the brain focuses on the negative. There's always going to be, a negative, I'll say, or not always, but there tends to be a negative frame on what has happened. Because that's how we stay days. alive. That's how our brains are like functioning right. because we're we're still not that far away from actually having to run away from danger. So yeah, right. we're not for real. Removed. Yeah. So yeah. So that is why we go there. Yeah. So having that reframe, hey, yeah, that happened. But look at all this good that stuff that also happened. 
again, you have to, your brain on a fundamental level has to connect pleasure to the actions that you're taking and not pain. This idea of everyone is going to have a rocky story, meaning that you are going to suffer the whole way to your goal and then at the end you raise your hands up and then you stay there is unlikely. It doesn't support natural, like it doesn't support human nature. It's a movie. If you want, uh, if you want to align with your human nature, avoid pain, go towards pleasure and still get results. That's how you win. So like, like there's only four steps. Like that's what I'm sharing right now, right? Create low pain, high pleasure results, based actions, achieve positive yeah. feedback loops, adapt and learn, and then solidify a new identity. Like this is all we do on a fundamental level, or I'm sorry, not fundamental on a like overview hierarchy. Like zoom Yeah, we out. talk about the specifics as we're talking to our clients, right. but it is still within that framework. And that's 100% in that framework. And once you create your new fit identity, that's when you really don't need a coach anymore because they're essentially just there. You can already, you can do for yourself what the coach has now done for you because you're now at that point as well. It's kind of like, um, you know, when you're in nursing school, you need an instructor, right? You need someone to show you the ropes. You need somebody to help you. You need to do your labs. But eventually, are you uh, an RN, uh, you know, with that same teacher walking around with you 20 years later, 10 years later, five years later? No. Why? Because you, you have graduated. the habit. You created that habit. You created yeah. the consistency of that habit. Yeah. yeah, You've graduated. You know what to do now and you've applied it. Most importantly, it's not just knowledge, it's application. And it's not mechanical knowledge, it's psychology knowledge, right? Habit knowledge, how to be able to keep it going. And that's where you don't need a coach. You know, long story short, I've only said this a few times, but I remember I was talking to a friend of mine who, very successful in business, and I told him about what what we do, and this because he was a new friend at the time, and this is going back a few years, and I told him how like, yeah, we want to help people transform their body to sustain it forever. And he just raised an eyebrow. He goes, so what happens after they get to their goal and you've taught them everything you know and they can do it on their own? I said, they will. They, they, they go off on their own and they do it. And he goes, that's a terrible business model. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean? And he goes, you're setting up a system to where you're giving the keys to the castle and now they don't need you anymore. Therefore, they don't pay. That's what anymore. I say all the time too, right? I want yeah. to work myself out of a job. That, right. I mean, that's my goal. I but, to work myself out of a job. And that is a good thing though, right? Because there's yeah. scarcity thinking and there's abundance thinking. Scarcity thinking is, oh my God, I can't give everything I know away because then people won't need anything. Well, that just means you're not growing and you'll have nothing else to give them in a week, a month, or a year. Then the other thought to that is like, if we really do what we say we're going to do and we help people achieve this, transform their body, sustain it forever. Again, don't take my word for it. Take the word of all of our reviews and video testimonials and all that. Correct. Um, correct. If they, if they can do it, don't you think that more people are, are going to be like, oh, cool. They did it for them. That's what I want. <laughs> right. And it's a virtuous cycle. The more people we help get off this wagon for good and permanently transform, the more people that will want to join. Right. So that's, that's the mission that we're on. I mean, it's, uh, you know, I, I, it's kind of out there, but I, our mission right now is still to help 100,000 uh, RNs, nurses, healthcare workers transform their body and sustain it forever. You know, right now we have, you know, about 15,000, a little over 15,500 uh, RNs, nurses, and healthcare workers in this Facebook group. We're working with, you know, 500, 600 clients. Uh, we're about to hit our, actually, our client cap again. So I'll have to figure out, all right, do we get more coaches? Do we not? I don't think we're going to for a bit. I think we're just going to put on a wait list or something. I'm not sure, but we'll figure that out. But the point is like, again, uh, sorry to digress, but the point is like, you can make this change happen. Just make sure that you're following human nature. Do not fight against human nature and you will win. Like it's, you know, a lot of the stuff we say on these podcasts are like the same stuff, but you don't need to be taught something new in a lot of cases. You need to be reminded more than you need to be taught. So once you have these ideas, like it's about us ingraining them with you. So hopefully this is beneficial yeah. in some way. Yeah. And I think it's about that. That's what it really is about, right? It's about consistency, right? And I go back to the, what I said at the beginning. It is not magic pixie dust. There's no like... Or unless you want to think of that magic pixie dust as consistency, it is just choosing yourself, choosing yourself as important, choosing yourself as urgent, setting those goals, 
eliminating the distractions, celebrating yourself, tracking your time. It's doing those, it's doing those things. Again, um, again. Some people need a coach to do it. So, I mean, we all need coaches. We all need coaches to do something, yeah, but it is about believing in yourself and knowing that you do, you can do this. Like yep. you can do this. You just 100%. have to be consistent. Awesome. We've been talking for almost an hour, so we should probably finish here. Um, <laughs> uh, as always, if you guys are interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching, I'll put a link above or below where you guys can uh, watch this video and we dive into how we get lasting results for our clients. And if it seems like it's a good fit, you can schedule a call with our enrollment coach team to see if it could be a good fit. That's it. We'll see you guys soon. Uh, whether you're watching this live or on recording, if this was helpful, feel free to like it. It shows it to more people in the group and just allows us to get closer and closer to our 100,000 goal. And um, yeah, drop a comment. Coach Rachel and I will come back and answer comments as well. We'll see you guys soon. Bye.